Hello everybody, my name is Brady and I'm a 19th century American historian and we're back with another react video But today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different Normally I would react to a video, but today we're gonna to be reacting to an article that I found online It's called 22 maps and charts that will surprise you. It's from Vox I should point out that this is from March 11th 2015 and when you get maps you get anything that involves data data is subject to change so i can't be sure that everything in this article still holds up so i guess that's worth pointing out right here but I've seen many articles like this, and I think they're so much fun. Maps are amazing. And there's not just typical maps where you just lay out things as they are. Maps can get weird, so I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. So let's get this started and take a look at some maps and maybe talk about it a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to like read the article. I might read a little bit if I need to to understand the map. Uh, I will post the article, the full thing, in the description box below, but mostly we're we're just looking at the pictures. <laughs> All right, let's get it started. So the first map, more than half the world's population lives inside this circle. So we got this little circle right here. That makes a lot of sense. You good? Okay, we good. Um, so that makes a lot of sense. We got China in there, which they have everybody. We got India, its population has been booming for a while now. I think economically, you hear about like corporations here in America, we hear about corporations all the time trying to get into the Chinese market, get into the Indian market. And it, it's big. The economic power of that region is huge just by virtue of the fact that they have so many people and people are money. People are capital in a way. So yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. The British have invaded almost every country on earth. Okay, this is a uh... This map looks a little bit older or a little bit more cheaply designed, but it, it makes sense. It, it, it's, it's a simple map, color-coded, and uh, one thing that stands out here, a lot of the countries, like you look at South America, we got Bolivia, we got Paraguay, um, we got some of the countries in here, we got some countries over here. Uh, something that a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them have in common is that they are landlocked. Like they don't have direct access to the ocean and since the british have tip, uh, historically had a very strong navy that actually makes sense why a lot of these countries uh would have avoided british invasion so yeah that that makes a whole bunch of sense i'm sure there's more reasons than that for a lot of these places but it's also kind of crazy how many places uh the british have managed to invade but yeah they they were once the most powerful empire on the planet all right. Africa is much bigger than you think. This is something really important to point out. And whenever you get into a geography class, you might learn this same thing here. Um, Africa, it's often a victim of being morphed when you put it on the map. Uh, when you take what is a sphere, the Earth, when you take that and try to put that on a rectangular surface, uh, naturally, it's not going to be perfect. Some of the countries will be morphed. Some of their sizes will be changed in order to fit. That's how maps often go. There are all sorts of different kinds of maps that try to compensate for this sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, Africa is a common victim of this. It, there are some maps I've seen where it looks like Africa is the same size as the United States, and that's not even close to true. You see this right here, you see this right here. Uh, no, it, you could fit a couple USAs inside of Africa at least, and you got, you got room. You got room for a lot of things. So yeah, that's worth pointing out. And a bigger lesson about how maps are limited. There, there are things that are difficult to express while trying to get everything in order on a rectangular surface. Um, it won't do the same job as a globe, perhaps. Maybe if you're looking for unobscured sizes, you might want a globe or something. I don't know if globes have a reputation for obscuring sizes. I don't know why they would, but who knows? Geography is hard and it's complicated. Maybe certain kinds of globes do. Uh, the wealthiest American in every state. Okay. 
Who is the most wealthy? Uh, Jonathan Nelson. Okay, that, that makes sense. He, he's not the most exciting billionaire. One thing that I immediately looked for when I saw this was, uh, do we have any states with no billionaires in it? And we got Maine here. Um, we got one right here. Uh, we got one right here. We got, we got a few places that don't have billionaires, and that's kind of surprising, but there, there's probably a good explanation for that. Off the top of my head, I don't really know. Uh, perhaps for taxation reasons, perhaps just business-wise, it makes sense to set up in different places. I, I don't know, but most places do have at least one billionaire, it seems, so that's a thing. Switzerland is the best place to be born. Okay, what do we got down here as far as information goes? Um, uh, Money is important, but it is not all that counts. Things like crime, trust in public institutions, and, uh, the health of the family life matters. Okay, all that stuff, yeah. That makes sense, yeah. Uh, measuring things just... While money is very important, having so much... Uh, can be kind of superfluous after a while um and you need other things to uh make your life good i guess uh, it, it's not the only factor but it is very important a lot of people try to be like oh money money it can't buy happiness well to an extent money can buy happiness it can buy a certain material comfort so uh U.S. is kind of up there. Um, we don't have, we have a lot of money, but not the most trust in our uh, public institutions. I don't know if this necessarily holds up the same today as it did when it first came out. We got a lot of countries that are, uh, that reflect the Cold War divide. Um, like first world, second world stuff. Uh, a lot of the... Uh, red countries were on the the side of the the filthy commies, and a lot of the blue countries are on the side of the the good freedom loving Americans. Um, that's that's interesting how that divide works. Some of these are fascinating to me, um, and we 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 have so much that's just kind of hanging out in the middle. I'm very curious about where Africa is going to be in like a hundred years, because economically, I feel like they have so much potential that they've just not gotten to tap into yet. So I'd imagine if you make this map again, a hundred years from now, Africa is going to be uh, much more diverse. Um, but we'll see. We'll see uh, what the world brings. Liberia, Myanmar, and the United States are the only countries that don't use the metric system. Yeah, uh, we, we don't use it casually. I guess if you're in a field like science-based, uh, you will learn the metric system. That That is a thing. Uh, mostly because uh, it's good to have that stuff be universal because you might be dealing with research that comes from elsewhere. That makes sense. Uh, casually, though, no, we don't use the metric system. And I recognize that it makes more sense, but I don't want to unlearn what I've already learned. I'm already not really a math person, so measurements and whatever, like, I try not to give too much thought to. <laughs> So it, I, I guess it doesn't matter as much to me as it might matter to somebody else. America is so big that its states are the size of countries. Ooh, I want to see if we have any fun ones. Iraq and California are the same. Japan? Oh, geez. Uh, what, what's mine? Uh... Rhode Island is the same as Samoa. We got a little note down here. Northern Cyprus would be closer, but is uh, virtually unrecognized. Okay, that makes sense. The one that really stands out to me is Maine and Portugal. Like, when you look at that on the map, that makes total sense. But I, I think Maine often gets overlooked, even over here. So, it's a little weird. But yeah, Maine, Maine is pretty big, when you think about it. Much of America is uninhabited. Yes, uh, the United States has so much land that we've not made uh, as much use of as we could. It, you talk about overpopulation, and depending on how we use our resources, uh, we could probably have way more people 
uh, on the planet than we currently have right now. I don't think overpopulation is as much of a problem as a lot of people make it out to be. I am willing to be persuaded on that, but yeah, there, there's a... Uh, there's plenty of resources. The question is, how do we distribute them? And uh, how, how do we get people out here to uh, make the most out of those resources? Do they want to? Um, you can't just make people go out and settle these unsettled lands. Um, the map of world wealth. Oh, this is a weird looking one. Um, the problem with this one, like it expresses some good stuff. Like you look at poor Africa here, it's like squished down into a little something. I don't even know what to compare that to. Uh, and then you got like the blown up US and whatever. But some, I, I can't even make out what country is which because they're so morphed that I can't, they're almost unrecognizable. Like, is this Russia right here? Because that's kind of crazy. I, I I understand that economically they're not like top dog, but I honestly expected them to be blown up a little bigger than they are here. I assume that is yeah, that's Russia, right? Where is it? I I'm. It, it's kind of confusing. It, it 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 is like the way that everything is shaped. Yeah, it, it's 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 a little hard. Um, it's it's cool to see which countries are bigger than they are and. Uh, in real life and which ones are smaller than they are in real life fewer people are dying from war than ever before huh yeah that makes sense um war has fundamentally changed over the past hundred years so that makes sense like since world war ii not it hasn't been a full hundred years yet but you know what i'm saying uh round favorably to me um yeah, uh, the way we conduct war is different. A lot of the bigger countries are not fighting one another. That would be huge if they were. That, that would make a, a gigantic difference. Uh, war has become more of a slog than like an urgent thing. Even like the conflicts of the Cold War, like the Vietnam and and uh, Korea, that th those are just fundamentally different from how we conduct war today uh yeah war changes and, and, and yeah the it, it, it's kind of crazy that uh the that we are better off in a lot of ways than we've ever been before we we look at the news and you'd think this is the worst time to be alive no we we've got some good things going for us less people are dying in general so that's nice i mean 2020 was a bit of an outlier i i don't know what the stats are on that Maybe a map on that would be good. Okay, this one's not a map, it's a chart, but uh, the most dangerous drugs in America are perfectly legal. That is uh, that is true. Uh, everybody in my life on the older side is a smoker. We got tobacco deaths, which are incredibly high, alcohol deaths, and oh, down here, uh, listed alcohol deaths do not include indirect causes like uh, uh, fetal alcohol syndrome, Traffic accidents. Traffic traffic accidents are probably uh, a big chunk of those. Um, so alcohol is right here. Sorry, I was. I think I circled tobacco when I was talking about alcohol, but alcohol is right here. Uh, prescription painkillers, uh, cocaine, heroin, marijuana. Yeah, you're probably not gonna. If you die from using marijuana, you're probably not doing it right. <laughs> Uh, the Philippines is the worst, sorry, <laughs> world's, not worse, is the world's most emotional country. Singapore is its least. I don't even, it's interesting how you would even measure that. I know a lot of these uh, qualitative ones tend to rely a little bit on self-reporting and what people are willing to uh, uh, admit to the surveyors. I'm definitely going to go back and read more of the specifics of this article, but I kind of want to see where everybody lies. Uh, it seems Russia is pretty not emotional. Um, that kind of fits in with some stereotypes. We've got uh, an interesting place where uh, some of these Asian countries who have kind of a stoic reputation, they kind of fall a little bit more in the middle, though. They're not, it's not the same as uh, Russia, who's like super not emotional. America, we're really emotional. We got so much hate. <laughs> um, 
But really, yeah, we, we've got a lot of feelings here. Um, you'll still be shamed for expressing your emotions all the time, but uh, people will often give you very emotional responses to you express expressing your emotions. They're just not always positive. Um, hmm, it's interesting. Germany and Japan have the world's oldest population. Uh, Niger has the youngest. That makes sense. Um, Africa has historically had a pretty young population. Um, I find it interesting that the Americas, we're, we're in kind of like the high 30s. Uh, Canada's a little older than us. I find that interesting. Um, it's all that health care they got going for them. Um, <laughs> People living longer. Uh, Russia's is higher than ours. And there's so many reasons that can go into a population, like an average population. So, like, I can't really uh, say for sure what the reasons for any of this would be. Like, obviously, there's a trend going on in Africa because it's so consistent throughout this part of Africa, at least. Not, like, the furthest north and not the furthest south, but, like, over here, there's clearly something going on there. All right. Snapchat is more popular than Twitter among millennials. That's an interesting one. Um, this is from 2014, so it's even older than the rest of this. So this one, there, there's definitely got to be new data on this one, but that's not at all surprising. I'm considered a younger millennial. I think I'm in the like last year of millennial. So that's where I'm at. I don't use Snapchat. I use YouTube. I have Twitter, Discord for the channel, uh, but I, I'm only on there a little bit. Uh, Facebook is still popular, I, I, and I haven't deleted my Facebook, but I only keep it for like uh, messaging people whose number I don't have. Half of US GDP comes from these 23 orange blotches. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's not surprising at all. We we get massive concentrations of uh it, it, it's uh this is one of those things i i wish i had more to say about because there's clear this is clearly big but my uh understanding of economics i guess is not sophisticated enough uh to make a really good point about that but i i find it interesting we've we've got some north we've got a decent amount uh like spread throughout the south here. I we got like a good concentration right here that I find I find that one to be especially interesting. Antarctica's weird time zones. Oh yeah, that that must be weird. Uh, yeah, that that kind of speaks for itself. I I didn't even think about that because like it's it's very narrow slivers. Once you the more you get towards the pole. Hmm. Uh, I've seen an interesting map that showed like uh, how, how what countries claimed land on Antarctica, and it, it's going to be very important going forward. Uh, eventually, countries are going to scramble for Antarctica because it's got a lot of oil that hasn't been tapped yet. So if we don't decide to get off of oil and we decide hey we we want to get in on that some countries might start looking into ways to sustainably get some of it from antarctica because there is apparently a ton and it's totally worth claiming um i believe australia has a decent chunk of it but like yeah a lot of places have their own little slice of the pie and i think a lot of the land that is claimed is literally broken up into like slices of pie type things going on. Some of these are really weird because you, you get a little closer here. It's different from being out here. That, that's strange. Guyana, Guyana. Yeah, Guyana has the highest suicide rate in the world. Hmm. Where does uh, the US stand? Um, not good, not good. Um, Hmm. So these places are doing all right. That's that's strange. That's strange. I, I, I don't understand what trends would drive things. Like this is one of those where I'm gonna have to read 
some of these things, but it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot on there. I, I would love to know the reason. Sometimes data is just data and you can't always get the best uh, reason behind it. Sometimes it's hard to explain, but we'll see. The world's uh, population concentration. Hmm. If the world's 6.9 billion people lived in one city, how large would the city be? Oh, hmm. Okay, this, this one's, I, I really wish I could see a little bit closer. It's kind of blurry. Um, but So I'm going to move on to the next one. Uh, assault deaths in America are falling. Oh, that's cool. Um, I wonder how it is after this year. I wonder if it's, it, I'd imagine it, it's probably down despite like public violence or whatever. Um, because people have spent so much of the year like not being out. But also, how many people do you think have gotten into like fatal combat over wearing a mask in store? You see so many people who are like, like, throwing fits or whatever how many uh how many like actual acts of violence am i not aware of occurring over the pandemic i i don't know it, it's a tense time i can't I'm, I'm curious if it's ticked up or down i can understand reasons for one or the other but i don't know what it is uh we've cut childhood mortality almost in half since 1990 yeah that's that's pretty uh pretty recent um, so is th this is in the world, right? Um, what do we got? UN interagency. Yeah, this, this is in the world. So um, I don't know how much this affect. This is like countries like the United States, like a lot of the European countries, or if this is uh, a lot of the countries that historically had lower uh, more mortality rates that that are starting to uh, fix that problem, and it's dragging the average survival rate up hmm that's kind of cool um that includes over two-thirds drop in east asia latin america caribbean and north africa uh, okay so there we go so yeah we, we've got a few cases of places there uh 21 so we got one more after this uh global population will explode to 11 billion people by 2100 yeah I've heard about this, so I was told uh, by a geography professor that uh, at the rate we're going, we're going to continue growing, and then we're going to, you see how this uh, line is starting to, uh, like, go a little bit more horizontal rather than vertical? Um, yeah, I, I, I think that seems to be where we're going to level off for a little bit, and we might even take a dip after this point, which that would be interesting. Unfortunately, uh, you and I probably are not going to be able to see this, but it, it will be uh, interesting for future generations to see. All right. You're a tiny speck of nothingness. Oh, thanks. Thanks. So let's just wrap it up on that. I get it. I'm little. Uh, we, I'm very insignificant in the, uh, the grand scheme of the universe. Yeah. So I get that you got you got a uh, visually this hardly because like this dot this this makes me feel like I'm bigger than uh, I should actually feel this dot feels like it's taking up more than I thought it should so uh, all right there we go uh, that was fun I I really love things like this and there's so many articles like this I want to do more things like this in the future and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I hope it left you like this guy. Yeah, yeah, because he, he was very excited to see the maps. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you want to see me do more stuff like this, let me know. If you know any articles like this you want me to check out, I'm down with doing articles too. I'm, I'm cool with doing YouTube videos, but there's all sorts of stuff that I could uh, check out in video form. So I'm, I'm down. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.